Good afternoon all, camelbacktrading.org coming to you this Monday afternoon, December 6th. We're looking at Window Traders Market Profile of SPY, IWM, and Triple Q. And nice day uh, for the buyers, right? Nice day for the bulls. We had basically B shapes long liquidation on Fridays. Well, today we have a P shape for short covering today. We had an attempt in SPY and ES with two sets of single prints. Didn't happen. Russell had a chance for single prints. It looks like they filled them right late in the day. Triple Q's held one set, so they have a double distribution day. Sometimes what didn't happen is just as important what does happen. We had a chance for an outside day down on Friday. Didn't get it. We rallied today. Today we had a chance for a trend day up. Didn't get it. So we'll see how that transpires. We literally bounced off the 50-day moving average this morning when A came down. Literally bounced right off it. We closed above it. Uh, just on top of it Friday, we opened above it, came in, bounced off it, never saw it again. Bulls basically controlled the day, even though they did give up the trend day um, in KL and M as the three stooges took it back. Had a very nice start to the week. Again, a lot of trading, just a lot of quick plays um, on both sides of the market. Uh, I took a long in A period um, because of the higher value right off the 50-day moving average. Didn't even realize it at the time that that was the 50. If I did, I would have played a big uh, position. <coughs> Excuse me. But I didn't realize it at the time, even though I had it written down on the side. But still did well on that call, play 453s. Did the same thing in B period. Once we popped the top and started getting some extension, 455 calls. C period, went to 456 calls and we had single prints. Um, that we're holding. And again, this was all just scalps. I wasn't staying married to anything. So B got good extension above A, but then C um, had trouble. D stopped the one-time framing only to have a reversal bar. Um, I did make money on a long in D when we took out C's low. That was a real nice one. Um, that was the 456 also. So my first four trades a day were all longs and all very nice. Then F period went up. I'm like, well, we, had it. we failed at singles. No real tempo to the upside, so I go, I'm going to start scalping shorts unless they tell me otherwise. So I scalped a couple of shorts in F period, 460s, did well. Did the same in G, and then on the third one got caught when it got some uh, extension. But it, I didn't get hurt, they were only small, so I made on two shorts in G, lost on one. Then I said, all right, let's see what they want to do. They got some extension. I was kind of surprised we took out Friday's high as early as we did today. I really thought this would be the type of thing where we do it later in the day. But we did it earlier in the day, and then look what happened later in the day. We closed inside of it. So I held off and didn't do anything, and then I started my shorts again in both J, uh, J period and K period. I'm sorry. What did I write? I, I'm sorry. I shorted J and a small one in K. All 460 and 461 puts. Nothing big. Then we flushed, I was looking for an afternoon pullback. Started inside the single print, small. When it filled F single prints, took a nice size play, which rallied enough to give me a very nice trade on a 458 calls. And then you can see when the market gives up their gains later in the day, it's like the week longs that get flushed out don't want to come back in. If this flush happens in I or J, I think we snap right back up. But because they hold on all day, pumping up volume, and then they finally give it up late in the day, L and M don't let them up a lot of times. And that's what happened again today. But it turned out to be a very nice day. As far as destinations, my goodness, we had a, over a $7 range, 95 million shares, and we have the high and the low. That's it. <laughs> Believe it or not. So expect more chop tomorrow. So 460.79, today's high. It's the only destination you have. It replaces Friday's high. And you should have everything else I gave you on Friday. For the low, 453.56, today's low. And then you should have the nine wide from Friday and the weekly low. Wide and far apart. So these short-term algos, um, they just have to search for something. And that's why we're getting these ranges and this volume because our reference points and destinations are far and wide apart. And then just quickly on the chart, I'm just going to show you the daily. So the daily for me is still balanced. We sat on top of the 50 Friday afternoon. Today we opened above it, got back to it, springboarded off of it. But we failed to hold um, a trend day. 
I pose the question to the room and I'll pose it to this place. And especially, you know, a lot of you follow me on Twitter. I put a poll out there. We're basically equal distance away from the 20 and the 50. About $5 away from each. Which one do we see first now? Me personally, I think because we took out Monday's high, I think the 20 I would think we would see first. Now, to me, the line in the sand is Friday's low still. If we, get, uh, if we take out Friday's low, well then I think uh, any kind of rally to new highs is off the table. But if we hold Friday's low, then I think we have decent odds of possibly going back and testing the all-time high. Go vote on Twitter on that poll. Thanks for the likes and subscribing. Come check us out at camelbacktrading.org. Enjoy your evening, and we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow.